Right, hello, lads and lasses, and welcome back to Boys Down Under. And dear oh dear, disappointing, exhilarating, exciting. Those are just some of the words that I'd use to describe our first Champions League match back after five years. Unfortunately, we of course went down 3-0 to Real Madrid, but it isn't something that really, it really isn't a scoreline that dictates how the match went. But before we go any further, if you guys are enjoying the content and you want to help support the channel, the very best way to do so is to click the like button, click the subscribe button, but without further ado, let's get into it. So let's not waste any more time because time is money, people. So the lineup was released identical to what I predicted in my pre-match preview, if you don't mind me saying, and I was happy with it. You know, it's what I expected, happy with it, solid overall, you know, Real Madrid had gone full strength, as I, uh, as I didn't really expect, but, you know, it was aw 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 awfully concerning. Because it meant we're going to get the full, fr the full force of their capabilities. But Celtic, we started the game as hot as fire. It was a blistering opening 20 minutes, to say the least. Within one minute, we had already had a decent chance, right? And I'll be honest, the, pretty much the whole first half was a blur. I was tired. It went back, it went past like a flash, but we do remember the key moments, you know. Abada, he had a great chance where uh, he hit it straight at Courtois after Jota played an impressive through ball. I thought that was disappointing. Callum McGregor, oh my god, he struck, you know, the, the worst spot of the post because it's the inside, but it isn't inside enough to go in the back of the net. It's literally the closest you can get without scoring a goal. That would have tore the house down. Torn the house down. I was in utter disbelief that that didn't go in. That 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 had it. Oh. And it wasn't even an easy shot as well for that matter. It was such a difficult shot. And he almost pulled it off amazingly. And it would have just sent Celtic Park into... It would have... Yeah. Celtic Park would have collapsed. There would have been a, a scale three. I think it's believe... I think you call it a scale. Scale three. Scale six. Earthquake. Seismic. Earthquake. Whatever you want to call it. Regardless... That would have been incredible, but we don't do ifs, buts, and maybes. We do absolute. Didn't score. We move on. And, you know, Real Madrid, they almost made us pay in that first half for our lack of chance taking. Questionable onside decision for Vinicius Jr. Saw him go one-on-one -on -one with Joe Hart, but Celtic's goalkeeper. We, he came on top ingeniously, putting his body on the line and keeping at nil all, which we went into half time with. And it was a great first half from Celtic. We pressed, we contained Real Madrid. You know, we were creating opportunities for ourselves. What more could you want? You know, underdog story, David versus Goliath. And all we could ask for the second half was more of the same. But, and the thing is, right, we went into halftime with equal shots on target. Someone is going to have to fact check that, but I th I'm pretty sure we went into halftime with equal shots on target with Real Madrid, but only a third of possession. So we were doing well. Right, and teams come back onto the pitch. We make one half-time change. Dyson Maida for Leo Labada. I guess that was intentional from Ange to, uh, how do I say, increase our pressing presence. Boy, but that was a mistake on Ange's behalf, wasn't it? Well, only three minutes in, Juranovic, who has been playing absolutely out of his skin all match. You know, he plays in a perfect cross. It falls to Dyson Maida's feet. To his feet, not to his chest, not to his head, to his feet. Where you score the majority of your goals with. And he makes a complete and utter mess of it. And completely throws our way our best chance to make it 1-0 the entire match. The replay showed, you know, the dugout's reaction to the miss. Harry Kuehl was there. He slumped into his seat, hat over his face, head in his hands. He knew how bad of a miss that was and how huge of a miss that was for the team. And it really represents how we all felt in that moment. Moment We were more... My dad was mad, but I was really just overly so heartbroken and disappointed because from that point on, the game turned on its head. Two goals in quick succession, dagger through our hearts. Then Eden Hazard, someone who hasn't scored in over 1,600 days from open play. Oh, it, no, not even. A man who hasn't scored in over five years from open play decides to score against Celtic. So that was great, but 
you know, we ended the game 3 0. Nice little cameo from Sed Haksabanovic, but there was nothing more we could do. And I do, however, want to commend the fans because it, it, it seemed like an absolutely incredible atmosphere. You know, from you never walk alone at the start of the match to the TIFO. The second TIFO in four days, I might add, it is incredible on your behalf of the Green Brigade. Uh, you know, they, they kicked us, they, they kicked the players on the whole game. You know, they kept them going. And in the 89th minute, everyone stood up, everyone cheered, and everyone sang Ange Postacoglu Ale, ringing out across the stadium. Very touching moment. I think that was a great moment and a great moment for a, a, a real needed moment for Ange, who probably is kicking himself that he let this one slip away. And you know what? It was a game of two halves, right? The first half, Celtic were clearly the better team and we deserved to go into halftime at least one goal ahead. The second half, we just we just faltered at the hands of the best team in the world right now. Went down by three goals and that was that. But the thing is, we didn't deserve to lose this game by three goals. You know, the scoreline, it absolutely flatters Real Madrid. There's no way they deserve to win 3 0. If I, 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 I fear, they don't. I, if, if we're really talking, if, we're, if I'm going to be real honest, it's a game of two halves. Celtic win the first half, Real Madrid win the second half. A draw, I think, is satisfactory and is very, uh, very fair for both teams, but that's not how football works. Like I said, we don't do if, buts, and maybes. We do absolutes. Do not copyright me. Anyways, that's how that went. But rather than focus on the match, in how it went and the timeline. Let's look at what we can take away because there are loads of things we can take away from this match. It was a game full of, you know, uh, things that happened that we could make post-match comments about. Now, firstly, a bit of a maths, uh, maths quiz. X is greater than dies in Mida, so what is X? Now, if you said Leo Labada, you you've got it right. You've got you get a hundred percent because. Before now, I know. Don't don't get on the keyboard, right? Don't mash the keyboard. I know. And before you all jump to conclusions, this isn't a segment of me unwarrantingly hating on Dyson Mida and criticizing him. Rather, criticizing Ange. And you know what? Criticizing Ange. It is pretty much blasphemy. It is extremely blasphemous. But he did make a mistake. Taking a barter off for Dyson Mida. Now, I know 100% hindsight, wonderful thing. You know, wonderful, wonderful thing. But all I'm going to say is that if Leo Labada was on the receiving end of that Josip Juranovic cross, Celtic would have been 1 0 ahead. And to be honest with you, half time, it seemed extremely premature to bring on Dyson Mida so early into this match. We didn't need to press Real Madrid, there was no need to press them so early. You know, Dyson Mida's substitution would have been so much better suited, you know, come the 75th minute if Celtic were still at nil all or only one nil down and he could inject some life while Real Madrid were even more tired than at the 45 minutes after they've just had a 15 minute break, you know. And look, also, I want to add on to that. We lacked so much more cohesion down the right flank. I, I guess the team as a whole did, but noticeably down the right flank, Dyson Mida and Juranovic, they're not really on the same wavelength. It's a bit weird. You know, when Abada plays there, they just, him and Juranovic, they feed off each other, they bounce off each other. When Dyson's there, there is a real lack of cohesion. So that, for me, is a mistake on Ange's part. But, you know, they're so few and rare that we can, it doesn't matter he made a mistake because he li literally never makes mistakes. He's almost perfect, right? He's still learning. We have to remember that. That was his first ever Champions League match. That was the first ever Champions League match managed by any Australian manager. You know, he's he's setting, he's he, he's walk he's walking the path so others can follow. And you know, we got to remember, he's always going to make mistakes. Unfortunately, it was, it was, it wasn't as costly of a mistake I think as I'm making it out to be. I don't think. But then you make the argument if Celtic do go one nil ahead, they do Real Madrid go and score three. You know, you we can't make those assumptions. So, rather than dwell on that, let's move on. Now, the second bit. Now, this is a major criticism, all right? Because I've spoken about this so much this year. You know, you guys probably already know what it's going to be about. The stats, right? Celtic had 10 shots and 4 on target. Real Madrid had 12 shots and 6 on target. 
But Real Madrid scored three goals and Celtic scored zero. What does that tell you? Well, you can interpret it in two ways. Firstly, you can believe the conspiracy theories that Celtic concede every single shot on target there is in Europe. Or, right, that Celtic needs shooting practice. Now, I said it a couple of videos ago, in Europe, we will get very few chances on goal. So, clinicalness is key to winning and getting results in these matches because if you don't take the opportunities you get, you're not going to get another one like you do in the league. Not to mention, the quality of goalkeepers in the Champions League is is ludicrously better than in the Scottish Premiership, you know? Thibaut Courtois compared to, I don't know, John McLaughlin is, is comparing boys to men. You know, that is... That's the best way I can think about it, right? So, look, honestly, I've spoke about it a couple of days ago because Celtic have been so clinical in the league this season. I thought we'd turned a corner. I thought we'd, you know, gone past that stage of spurning too many chances, but it seems we do need to make a bit more of it because when you're coming up against quality keepers, it's you, you have to take the best chances. And that dies in Mida one. His whole net to shoot from, you know, only a goalkeeper there in front of him, he should have put that away. It reminds me of, if you guys remember, the Bayer Leverkusen game from last year at Celtic Park. 4-0 to Bayer Leverkusen, but we had maybe six or seven shots on target, but it was a goalkeeping masterclass from Lucas Hradecki. But the best players, they take the goalkeeper out of the equation, and that's what we need to start doing in Europe. And I'm going to hone in on this against Shakhtar next week, because, boy, frustrating when we have so many chances and we don't score really is but i refuse to end this video on an angry sad frustrated any sort of negative tone we went toe to toe with the best team in the world for 45 minutes carlo ancelotti even had to admit himself his side suffered in the first half celtic got the better of them we looked good we looked amazing we looked absolutely incredible and like i said earlier we deserved to end that first half a goal to the good but football doesn't work like that Football is annoying like that. You can not, you can, you, so many times you will not get rewarded for the effort you put in. And it was one of those nights. But I am so proud of the lads. Each player gave 110%. And I know for a fact, if we play that way against any other team in uh, Shakhtar Donetsk, RB Leipzig, we will have European football after Christmas. You know, will it be Champions League? Well, that really depends on if Marion Javed will come back to haunt us. Because, you know, you scored a double today against Leipzig. How? I know one of them was a goalkeeper mistake. I didn't see the other, but still. Him scoring a double in the Champions League, he couldn't even get a start. I'm, I'm getting sidetracked. And that calls for the end of the video, but I do want to make special... Yeah, I, have to, I can't end the video without praising Callum McGregor. My man of the match today... He was, okay, my Celtics man of the match today. Overall, the man of the match would have been Federico Valverde. But... My Celtic man of the match, Callum McGregor. He was absolutely everywhere. He was phenomenal today. He he was red raw by the time he ended the match, not from sunburn or anything like that, but purely because he was working his ass off for uh, 90 minutes straight. You know, Real captain's performance. I wish he got the goal because that would have just summed up the whole way he played today, but truly leading from the front, and we're, we're blessed to have a player of his quality on our hands. But that's all from me. So if you guys did enjoy the video, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, leave your thoughts on the game, because I'm sure everyone will have a lot of differing thoughts on it. And yeah, until next time, hail, hail.